This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to the Structure Inspection Level 1 Bridge Plan Reading uh, video. This class is being put together by the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet for those who are interested or those who are enrolled for the Structures Inspection Level 1 class. Uh, today we're going to be going through a set of bridge plans. We have the Spencer County uh, Kentucky 55 bridge over Salt River. It's in Bloomfield, Taylorsville Road. Uh, what we have right here is the title sheet. This is the first sheet you'll get on a set of bridge plans and what you see. Uh, there's a lot of information on this sheet. You can see, let's zoom in here to the estimate of quantities. These give you everything and all the pay codes, especially which going into this bridge. Uh, everything is broken down between the indent, the pier, appears in the in-band number two and then the superstructure you have the quantities at the bottom uh, we'll go over some of those topics in class and i'll mention a few of them as we get to it during the, this video also you can see the items concrete class a concrete class double a steel reinforcement steel reinforcement epoxy coated and so on and so forth these are the items so if you ever have any questions about what's getting paid or what quantity refer back to here and you can get that information also on this sheet, let's go up to the upper right corner, is the index of sheets. This is one of the most important things here on the sheet. This is the table of contents. This gives you every sheet number and an idea, a description of that sheet. So say your contractor asks you, hey, at Pier 1, what are you wanting to do? You can go here, see Pier 1 is on sheet S10. And from sheet S10, let's we are looking at Pier 1 right here, and what that does, we can flip straight to Pier 1, and then we can find out what the contractor is asking. Uh, let's move on down. Get rid of this highlighter. So let's move on down the sheet to the special notes that are included with this job. Uh, this one just has a special note for drill shafts. Uh, any other special notes that may be applied on future bridges would be noted here. These special notes can be found in the, in the proposal. So if you see something listed here, go to the proposal, check out the special note and read it. Uh, the special provisions will be included in the plans and in the proposal. This one's just our standard special provision 69, embankment at bridge and bench structures, and then on down to standard drawings. Standard drawings are listed here. They're important for helping to build the bridge but they're not labeled in the set of plans because they're the same drawing over and over for every bridge. Uh, make sure you get a copy of your standard drawings book or know where to find these online for future bridges. Down below that, you can see the different specifications the bridge is designed for, who designed the bridge, and then all the basic information. Right here, note, it says sheet number S1. If you go back up here to the index of sheets, you can see the sheet numbers, how they're labeled. So when you're looking for the pier on sheet S10, you can flip through this corner down here until you find S10 and then turn to that page. All right, let's move on to the next page. Next page is the general notes. Uh, the general notes might look like a lot and just think, well, these are the same on every bridge. I can skim over them. I encourage you to read these. Uh, some of these are copy and paste notes, but some are also very bridge specific. Make sure you read these, highlight anything specific that you know needs to take place. Uh, the pouring sequence listed here, different completion, uh, coffer dams, wind loads, uh, different drains. I just read over these in detail. Also on this sheet, it has the abbreviations. So a lot of these terms will be used in the bridge plans but they won't be written out like that for space. They will be written with the abbreviation. So if you're confused to what abbreviation is when you're looking through a set of plans, flip back to this sheet, find this, and find what the abbreviation stands for. Down here you can see it's sheet S2, so we know we're working on the right sheet. Your general notes are always going to be around S2, S3. They're going to be right after the uh, title sheet. Next sheet, we go into the layout sheet. Uh, in this sheet, there's a lot of general bridge info. You can get length, width, 
span orientation, what type of foundation the bridge is going to have. Uh, here you can see slope protection. Uh, you got pile cutoffs. You got shaft tips. All that information is here. Let's go into it and actually look at the different views we have. So let's go into the elevation view. That's this top one here. Uh, this is kind of like say you're down in the creek, standing on a railroad, standing on a road that we're building a bridge over, looking at the bridge. So you can see the length of the bridge. You can see the indents here. You can see the piers here and the piers here and the indents here. You can see the piling. Uh, you can see the approximate rock line when the pile of the caps, you can see where your piling is, where it's going to. Here they have shafts with the elevations of the top of drilled shaft. Another good thing about the elevation view is it actually gives you span orientation for the bridge beams. So this one's saying we have a 100 foot span from indent one to pier one. That's right here. Our next span length is 130 foot. So from pier one to pier two is 130. And then from Pier 2 to Invent 2 is another 100 foot span. These are Type 7 precast I beams uh, that have continuous loading for HL93. If there is any skew in the bridge, you will find it right here. Also gives roadway widths and what type of fills or slopes there are. Next down is the plan view of the bridge. So take the deck off of the bridge and just looking at the crow's eye view or nowadays terms the drone view. Uh, you can look at it from up above. It gives you roadway coming into it, indent one with piling orientation. Uh, you got your piers with the shaft orientation, shows which direction the river's going. And then also over here, it gives you slope protection as well. Typical section is pretty critical because it gives you how what your beam spacing is, gives you your lane widths and also total roadway width. So if you ever need to know what your gutter to gutter dimension is, you can go to the sheet, figure that out. Also shows your barrier wall type. Let's move on over here. This bridge itself has a curve in it, so it's a slight curve. If you have any kind of curve in your bridge, this is where you would go to find that, the north arrow. And some notes that go with this as well. Next page is our subsurface data. So we've gotten from gotten away from general information to actually getting into what we need to build a bridge. The first thing that goes into a bridge is figuring out where we're going to build it and what's below. Uh, so during the design, our geotech crews have gone out and actually drilled core holes into the material, into the earth where we're going to be building the different uh, structures. And some they have taken samples and some they just drive down to rock or what they call refusal and stop and then give us that elevation. So here, at the end band, we have drill holes, the 1001, 1002, 1003. If you notice the difference, 1001, 1002 are just circles. 1003 has a black circle with inside it. That black circle means they took a core sample at that location. So if you're wanting to find out information about what type of material we have here, you go to the core sample. And you can see here all along, you've got different core samples and different refusals where they're at in the locations come down here about halfway down the sheet, you see this line that goes across with different tick marks on it. That actually gives you where each one of these holes are in station and offset. So if we're wanting to look at 1003, we come down here and look 1001, 1002, 1003. And from that now we can see what that core sample looks like all the way down to the base of weathered rock. Uh, this will be covered in the geotech portion of the class so don't worry about that right now but from this we can be able to say base of weathered rock we know we're driving piling to that weathered rock i can assume it's going down to elevation 474. it also gives you your elevations over here on the side so if you ever need to go across you can put a straight edge on it figure out at what elevation is what type of material all the other core holes are listed as well 1004 has got a core hole 1005 is just refusal so if we go up here 1005, you can see it doesn't have the black dot in it. So it's just a driven to rock to when it stops. Uh, next page is just a continuation of that. They can't fit all the core holes on one sheet. So it's usually two to three pages. 
All right, that's actually going into starting construction of the bridge. So we know where everything is. We know what type of materials there. We actually need to start constructing. The first thing to be built is the foundation. So indent one is a foundation that's built on piling. Pier one, pier two are drilled shafts. And indent two is piling as well. If you'd have any abutments here, that would be shown with the abutment. On this is also some pretty good information to see an idea of what we're going to. These are the top of shafts are uh, labeled. Uh, point bearing piles gives you the cutoff elevation that is known. But as you see here, these two columns are blank. Reason being is this gets filled out after piling is completed. So your job as the inspector is to measure the length of pile that's in place. So you mark it and you have an idea how far it's going to go down. And then once it's in the ground, you can mark measure from the top to what the bottom is, say it's 26 feet that's in the ground, you write 26 here, and then you can do the math to actually figure the point of the pile elevation as driven. Uh, this is important for asphalt plans, so our load raters in Frankfurt can use this information to properly load brake bridges. Same goes for drilled shafts. Uh, you got the top of shaft, then you got the bottom. What you're doing here, you just take a weighted tape, drop it down the hole, and figure out how deep it is uh, for this information. There's also a note here for the piling. Uh, it's a different type of hammer, what the rated energy is for. Same goes for the pile record for the commit two. And then look at any notes. This is a special note for drill shafts. I read through this, make sure you know what's happening before they start drilling shafts. Also a good thing here, you can see on this piling, it gives you the direction the piling is oriented in. Uh, make sure you know this. This is critical for how the bridge is built, whether it's supposed to move or it's fixed. Uh, you'll learn more about this in class as well, but this sheet can give you the difference orientation. All right, so let's move into actually constructing indent one. Uh, indent one, pier one, pier two, and indent two are very similar. We're gonna hit heavily on indent one and then kind of glaze over the next sections. So the very top here gives you your plan view. It shows the cap where the beams are sitting. These right here are the beams. It kind of gives you center line of where they are, and then it shows piling as well. The orientation of the piling can be seen here as well. This is good to have so when the contractor is laying out everything, you can double check. Is the width right? Is the length right? Is it on center the way it's supposed to be? Down below it here, you actually have a elevation view. We're looking at it from the side. It shows you the bars that are going in the wing walls, as well as the bars that are going in the indent. Notice here, these are just labeled with an A number and a number after. What does that A number mean? Well, glad you asked. Let's go to the reinforcement table, bill of reinforcement on two pages away. So here on the bill of reinforcement, you can see the mark number, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. This is specific for each member. Uh, this is for MBIT1. Pier 1 will have its own bill, bill of reinforcement and so on. But from this, say, look at A2. We can see A2 is a straight bar. Here there's 12 of them. That's number. It is a number 5 bar, which means it's 5 eighths in diameter. And its length is 33 foot 6 inches long. It goes in the cap and there is no bend information. So from this, we know A2 is a 33 foot six inch bar. Let's go back up to what we're looking here. A2, you can see them right here. There's A2, it shows them right in the middle of the cap and they run the length of the cap. You can see this one, they've got a lap splice. Right, you can see how the bars lap over, that's detailing a lap splice. This also gives you the bottom of the cap. So if you want to know where it is and how far they need to excavate to and get a double check, you can go here and find that out. Coming on down, you can see the different sections. This is actually a section of the cap. You can see the steel that's going in here. Right here on this top section, there's four A1s on equal spacing. And then A3 is this square looking bar. It's going to come out like that and they'll put those in around all the longitudinal bars that are in. 
So when you're constructing inbound one, make sure you get to this sheet of the bridge, the bridge plans, look it up, familiarize yourself with all the spacing and everything and what bars are going where. That way you kind of know what's going into what the contractor is going to be doing. Uh, just a continuation of inbound one, some more views of it in the actual diaphragms. Um, this is the diaphragm. So we're fixing these beams in here. And you can see there's going to be concrete poured in between the beams. Here's your wing. Next, you go into Pier 1. As you notice, we are working our way across the bridge from west to east and south to north. That's out north. That's how stationing goes. Uh, this gives you a view of what the columns look like, what the cap looks like, steel. Uh, the same as what it was on the invent. You've got the picture here with each label for what mark the bar is. You can go to the bill of reinforcement and then look up that bar to figure out what's there. Familiarize yourself with this before they start tying steel or before they even start setting forms. That way you know the widths, you know the lengths, and you know the offsets from where everything's supposed to be. Another view at Pier 1, just kind of looking at it from up above, looking at it from the section through the cap and so on. There's your bill of reinforcement. Here's your bend details. You've got your uh, a spiral bar right here, different cap bars, and all the information that goes in that bill of reinforcement. All right, same thing for Pier 2. Don't assume these are the same. They can be a little different. Make sure as they're working on Pier 2, you go to the sheet, look at it, get the information. Uh, Invent 2, very similar to Invent 1. It's got different views of it, the piling layout, uh, the sections. I won't go through that much more since we kind of covered that on Invent 1. All right, so now we get into our framing plan. This is, we've got all the piers and end bands built. We're ready for beams to be delivered to site, whether they're concrete beams, steel beams, box beams, whatever it may be. This is giving you their orientation, how they're directed from the end band. If there's any skew, uh, this bridge did not have any skew. Uh, it gives you their uh, dimensions, where they're at. Uh, make sure you read through this. It shows location of intermediate diaphragms. Uh, this is whoever's going to be doing the erection of the bridge. We'll have this sheet kind of labeling and making sure everything is correct. This goes along with the shop drawings for the bridge beams. Not only if you're getting ready to set beams, don't just look at this. Get the shop drawings out. There are very good notes on the shop drawings. Uh, you should be able to ask your engineer, find those in project wise uh, to have that for this structure. Next sheet down, you might look at this and think, well, this is just for the fabrication shop. This is telling them how to build the beams. True, but there are general notes here that are specific to the bridge. Uh, look at these. We had one that had a lifting type, how it was supposed to be lifted. The contractor wasn't going to do that. The engineer found out about it, and they had to redesign their whole erection procedure to meet the notes. Uh, another drawing of the intermediate diaphragms. You got some cross bracings here. These bolts are structural bolts. Make sure they get tightened properly. You can get that information from the notes that are on here. Different connections telling you what type of bolts, uh, the shop drawings, what your angles are supposed to look like. So once you've started getting bridge beams on site or you know you're setting beams the next day, go to these two pages, look at them, and then also get the shop drawings and look at those as well. All right, so beams are in place. Uh, they're going to start tying steel, setting deck pans. Uh, this sheet's giving you that information. It shows you all the steel that's going in the deck. You can see these bars that are going along the deck are S2, S3. And then if we go here, back at the beginning, you can see just how we're looking across the bridge, if there's any skew. Uh, it shows where drain locations are. And it gives you how many bars are going across the deck. Right here, we have 799 S1 bars that are at 5 inch on center for a total of 332 feet 6 inches. That's top and bottom slab. Uh, we can figure out what those are by going to look at the bill of reinforcement again. This gives you a plan view and then any kind of what's going in the negative moment area 
you'll figure this usually your negative moments are over top of the peers there are some bigger bars that are put in there to help take the load in that area here's a good view of what you have so you got s3s that are the, running across the length of the bridge and then s1s are running across the width of the bridge uh, these are put in these are actually they're going to be the very top bar and you can see how the orientations here and then you got your bottom bars and steel Make sure you look at these to make sure spacing is correct. Uh, make sure they're tied right. Make sure deck drains are put in the right locations. This also gives you your barrier wall steel. This bridge had a special decorative wall. Uh, typically, we would just put in the standard drawing for bridge rail in type three, and you could go to the standard drawing for that information. But if you have a special wall, you'll see the different designs for it right here. Uh, some more information on the superstructure. This one had some light poles that were on the wall. So they had to detail the connection and how the reinforcement was at that. Then here is your bill of reinforcement. If you'll notice, all of these marks have an E after them. That E stands for epoxy. So instead of having black steel, we've got steel that's been coated with epoxy. Gives you the location, any bends. And the last page is our construction elevations. Once we have got beams set and we have deck pans in place, we need to get X dimensions or construction elevations. These are critical and crucial for our designers and load raters to have for future load rating and also for any future wear for bridge maintenance. These show you where these locations need to be taken. Uh, each There's a grid that's made by all these imaginary lines and center line of the beam. Read these notes. Uh, it tells you where to take it. Here in a second on the next page, there's a drawing. No, just the construction elevations. So here at beam one, you're actually going to fill in the top of the beam. Usually the contractor is taking these and we're collecting the information right there with them. Uh, we write down the top of the beam and from that we can calculate the X dimension. We need to get all these. This chart gets filled out as well as the charts back on the uh, layout sheet or the foundation sheet for piling and drill shafts. And these are turned in as our as builds. So we've made it through the whole set of bridge plans. Uh, as you can see, everything is laid out according to how the bridge is uh, oriented. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. My name is Ryan Gossam. My email is R Y A N dot gossam g o s s o m at k y dot g o v. I thank you for listening to this, and I look forward to having you in class.